He bounced up the steps, two at a time, friendly old steps, trying not to grin like a fool because Mr. Donatelli would give him that blue eye once over, and he better look tough in all business on day number one. He hit the door and stepped in, and his jaw dropped. The gym looked like Reverend Price as hell. Half-naked bodies were jumping and twisting and jerking around. Bells rang. The peanut bag went rackety, rackety, rackety. Ropes swish slapped against the squeaking floorboards. Someone screamed, time! Gasping voices, ugh, ugh, and an enormous black belly rushed past, spraying sweat like a lawn sprinkler. Alfred shrank back against the door. Slowly, he picked out objects he had seen before. The heavy bag was swinging wildly on its chain as the boy with the enormous belly battered it with fists as big as cantaloupes. The peanut bag was rattling against the round board as a skinny white boy with hunched shoulders beat it into a brown blur. Near the medical scale, two Puerto Ricans were jabbing at their reflections in full-length mirrors. They were quick as cats. Other boys were jumping rope, jerking up and down like mechanical jack-in-the-box, or straining on leather floor mats until their neck cords popped, or slamming medicine balls into each other's stomachs. In the ring, their heads encased by black leather guards, two fighters danced around each other, ducking, bobbing, bouncing on and off the quivering ropes. A stick-thin old black man with white hair was yelling at them, Faster, faster, pick it up! The room began to shrink, and the noise pounded against Alfred's head. He looked around for Mr. Donatelli, or Henry, but neither was in the room. He saw an old sign on the wall. Amateurs, $2 weekly. Professionals, $5 weekly. Payable in advance. He felt for his wallet. There would be at least $2 in it, but there was no one around to take his money or tell him what to do. No one was even looking at him. Leave now, he thought. Come back some other time when it's less crowded, when Henry's around. But something told him if he left now, he would never come back. He waited, watching the thin man unstrap the fighter's head guards and shake a black pencil of a finger in their faces. He watched the enormous belly move lightly across the room toward the peanut bag and take over when the skinny white boy draped his arms and shuffled away. The Puerto Ricans claim, climbed into the ring, and the rope jumpers began shadow boxing. Everyone seemed to know what to do. Some other time, he thought, edging backwards out the door, turning so quickly that he never saw the chubby little man until his elbow banged into his soft chest. Ugh! Oh, I'm sorry, I... The little man held up a small hand. That's an illegal punch. I didn't mean to. If the referee saw that, you'd lose the round. Automatically. He was smiling, his reddish cheeks puffed out like a squirrel's. I wasn't looking. No harm done. Your first day? Yes, Mr. Donatelli said. He's not here today. One of his boys has a fight at the garden tonight. I'll come back some other... Today's better than tomorrow. What's your name? Alfred Brooks. I'm Dr. Corey. The dentist downstairs? Aha! Alertness! The little red face moved closer, and tiny gray eyes blinked behind thick spectacles. For that, I will offer you a pearl of wisdom. Are you ready? Yes, said Alfred, feeling his jaw relax. The stomach is more important than the chin. Hit the chin, and you may break your hand. Kill the belly and the head will die. Do you read me? I don't think so. The dentist shrugged. I am too far ahead of my time. Start with sit-ups, Alfred. Make your stomach like a rock. Puffing slightly, he walked over to the ring. The thin man smiled and patted him on the shoulder. Alfred walked over to the floor mats. Two boys in gym clothes and boxing shoes were balancing themselves on their shoulders, kicking their legs up in the air. One was a skinny white boy. The other was well-built, with light skin and reddish hair. Alfred waited until they finished their exercise before he lowered himself to a corner of the mat. You gonna work out in street clothes? asked the redhead. All I got, said Alfred. Let any trash in nowadays, he grumbled, rolling over and starting push-ups. Alfred stretched out on his back, putting his hands under his head, and pointing his toes. 
He jerked up fast, went back down, and jerked up fast again. In high school gym class, he had always been good at sit-ups. What you call them? asked the redhead. Sit-ups? Ha, you hear that, Danny? He calls them sit-ups. The redhead laughed and poked the white boy. So show him how to do it, Red, said Denny, looking annoyed. Don't waste my time with trash, said Red, getting up and walking away. Let me show you, said Denny, rolling over on his back. The scrawny body came up very slowly, quivering with the strain, folding over until the face and the knees were almost touching. Then Denny went back down again, even more slowly. Thanks, said Alfred. You bet, said Denny. Alfred tried it, coming up slowly, inch by inch, fighting to keep his legs straight and his heels on the mat as his shoulders began to quiver and the muscles in his stomach tightened painfully. Up and then over toward his knees, feeling the long muscles in his thighs pull and his back muscles tear until the blood flooded his head and he couldn't go any further. Then slowly back down again, his body shuddering till slowly, gently, he lowered the back of his head to the mat. He took a deep breath and the pain faded away. That right? He asked, but Denny was already on the so other side of the room. Skipping rope. The second sit up was harder than the first and the third was harder still. But by the fourth, his muscles began to get warm like a car engine heating up on cold morning and they stopped struggling against each other. He did 20 sit ups before he fell back exhausted. Not bad, he thought been such a long time. He sat up and looked around. Dr. Corey and the thin man were talking at the ringside. Boxers were grunting away all over the gym. No Henry. He turned over and started on push-ups, slowly concentrating on keeping his body straight. After 34 push-ups, his arms felt rubbery. Hey, Alfred, been here long? Henry dragged up a box under his arm. Had to go downtown, pick up something for Bud. Who's Bud? Bud Martin, Mr. Donatelli's assistant, said Henry, pointing at the thin man. See you later. Hey, Henry. Yeah? Henry turned impatiently. Alfred tried to think of something to say, anything to keep Henry from leaving. His eyes fell on the sign. Do I have to pay two dollars now? No, when you can spare it easy. If you can't pay, Mr. Donatelli won't throw you out. Henry, called Bud Martin. Right there. Alfred did a few more sit-ups, but the sweat running under his street clothes began to itch. Some of the boxers were weighing themselves and joking and drifting off into the shower room behind the rusty lockers. The gym was quieting down. The peanut bag was silent. Dr. Corey passed him on the way out, but didn't look down. Henry was over in a corner helping Bud Martin pack a black satchel. Alfred was alone again. He felt another urge to leave, but he forced himself to stroll over toward Henry and Bud, his hands in his pocket, casual, so no one could tell he fell out of place. Up close, Alfred could see Bud Martin's ribs pushing through his tattered t-shirt, but the bony hands were sure and quick as the old man stuffed small jars and rolls of tape into the valise. Hey, Bud, shouted Red, shouldering past Alfred. Bud didn't look up. Need some more cotton tips, Henry. Sure. Henry disappeared back into the dressing room. I'm talking to you, bud, said Red. Talk, snapped bud. I need my hands taped. You learn to do it yourself. Well, a streeter don't have to do it himself. Bud looked up, his black eyes hard and the skull face. Muscles all over his face twitched underneath the drum-tight skin when he talked. but Willie knows how, and there's a difference right there. Red mumbled something and walked away, again brushing Alfred. Some people, said Bud, think this is a nursery school. Henry, I got the cotton tips, said Henry, putting a cellophane package in Bud's hand. Better bring me another jar of Vaseline. Right. Always use a lot of Vaseline on Willie's face, said Bud talking mostly into the black satchel. 
He's got dry skin that cuts so easy. Sometimes even the grease doesn't help. What happens if he gets cut? Asked Alfred. Bud reached into the satchel and pulled out a small jar of yellowish paste. Stops the bleeding. Keeps the cut clean. What is it? Clarence Martin's magical potion, patent pending. What's in it? Bud winked. I got doctors called me from California ask what's in it. Do you tell them? You crazy boy. Only Donatelli and me knows what's in it, and even he don't know exactly how much of each special ingredient I use. Like a trade secret? Exactly. Bud grinned, showing pink toothless gums. I invented it 41 years ago. Had this lightweight skin so thin would start bleeding if his mother kissed him. Lightning Lubep. Real good, little. I need a head guard, said Red. I'll get it, said Henry, limping up with the Vaseline jar. Stay where you're at, Henry, said Bud. Now what you need a head guard for? Go and spar. You know the rules, boy. No sparring unless the boss or me is watching. He's not here and I ain't got time. Don't be an old woman, said Red. If you don't know the rules, maybe you don't belong here. I pay my dues. I belong here more than a lot of people. Rules the same for everybody, said Bud. Just give me a head guard. The room fell quiet. Whoever had started punching the peanut bag stopped, letting it squeak into silence on the swivel. The Puerto Rican boys, Denny, the anonymous belly, the others moved into a circle around Alfred, Henry, Red, and Bud. Ever since you come, said Bud softly, looking into the satchel, you've been a smart meat. Be sweet, boy. Ju Joe Lewis been up here, and he had a good word for everybody. Sugar Ray and Cassius Clay bent up and treated everyone fine. Skip the lip, said Red. Your job's to get me a head guard when I want it. My job's to help Mr. Donatelli train you how to fight, but you gotta be a man on your own. You saying I ain't a man, you old crow? Red's hands came up. Alfred saw they were taped. You want to fight somebody, you fight me, said the enormous belly, pushing Alfred out of his way. I say you ain't no man either. Mind your business, Jelly Belly, said Bud. Carefully, he took the Vaseline jar from Henry's outstretched hand and placed it in the satchel. He snapped the satchel shut and looked up. Now, what's your problem, boy? Red leaned forward, his skin flushing with sudden blood. Bud's gaunt face seemed to get blacker. If you had any teeth, I'd knock them out, said Red. Go make believe I got teeth. Red's right hand balled into a fist and the arm shot out like a jackhammer, straight at Bud's mouth. The old man never blinked, lazily waving his left arm, knocking Red's hand aside. One skinny black hand whipped out and cracked against Red's jaw. Red backed up, tears springing to his eyes. Alfred suddenly felt sorry for him. Red ran to his locker, pulled out his clothes, and bolted out of the gym. Bud looked around. Don't nobody tell the boss about this. Everybody gets a second chance around here. Now go on with what you were doing. Show's over. The others drifted away, and Bud fingered the lock on the satchel. Nobody ever said it was easy. Got to come up here day after day, got to put out, and some days nobody even looks at you except to say you're doing something wrong. He looked at the satchel. That's part of it. You hungry enough, you keep at it. He looks right at Alfred. Are you Alfred Brooks? Yes. Figured, tonight you're going to see a real fight. No slapping. Me? Yeah, Henry's got your ticket. The boss said if you ever came back, you might as well see what you came back for.